Hey everyone, this is Ole Shinraki from Laddering Your Success, and you're listening to the LYS Podcast. All righty, all righty. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the world. Welcome one, welcome all to another hot and fresh, hot and baked. What, what do they say, Little Caesars? Fresh, hot, and ready or something like that? Hot and ready, yeah. Hot yeah, and ready. hot and ready episode of Edge of Steps, powered by Ladding Your Success. As always, I am your, I'm so honored to be your host. My name is Ole Sharunke, here with my good friend, Fessa Samoye. Fessa, how you doing today, my good Hey, 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 good afternoon, everybody. I need to do the brim, 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 brim sound. It's coming. It's I'm coming. Gonna figure, yeah, I'm going to figure out this little board that I got. Oh, that's right. You do have the. <laughs> and then uh, just be on and popping then. For sure, for sure, man. And as always, we are we're super, super honored and blessed to have the mighty, mighty doctor, the mighty most with the prescription, with the description. My good friend, Jamar Crawford, how you doing today, brother? Hey, happy to be here with you guys. Man, so happy to have him back on. Looks like the beard is coming in fresh. The hairs are going. He's got good copper, vitamin multivitamins in the system the blood's flowing we love it we love it man so happy to have you back with us man i think the ambassador's around he's probably doing the ambassador thing walking around shaking hands kissing babies we all know it's not easy being the ambassador of of the, of the city right? at all <laughs> and my camera's not working bro Oh, no, no, no worries man your, your voice is strong your voice is strong enough the presence is there man well, let me go ahead and get this started. We actually came up with this this subject last night. Oh, well, I think well, last night I, I sent the idea to Festus because he sent me a clip of this podcast called, called "In My Opinion" podcast UK. They're based out of the UK, and I, and one of the one of the guests gave an awesome testimony about you know his life and dealing with certain issues. And I said, you know, kind of based off of some of the things I've been through, we, I think a lot of us have been through either ourselves or through people, close friends or family. I said, this would be a wonderful thing for us to talk about today. So I want to go ahead and play it real quick. And all right, here we go. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. You got to work with the parents. It's got to be so good. You know what I'm saying? And I, Funny enough, I take medication for ADHD. Open about that, right? Oh, yeah, and I've had it since. You guys can school. discuss it. So yeah, yeah. 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 So, so this, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I've had it since primary school. Mm. They've been telling my parents. I remember going to meeting African parents. But I, I'll African go parents, home. Yeah. yeah, my mom will beat me because she's like, "Why are you acting stupid? They think you're disabled." Cool. Is she? So oh, instead nice. of my mom to go with yeah. it, yeah. The school can't do anything about it if my parents don't agree to it. Yes, okay? yeah, yeah, because yes. schools have by a law, thing where they by can... Law. By law, exactly. By law. You know how schools can get you an EHCP yeah, plan, yeah, they yeah, can yeah, get your yeah, plan yeah. to support you to learn. Mm -hmm. If your parents don't agree to it, they can't help you. So I'm going through primary school, no help. Secondary school, I get to year 10, year 11, Never. and they're like, and it's and getting like worse. A, yeah, and that's it's like getting worse. very key oh. do you know what I'm saying? Your education. And one teacher, there was this one deputy head teacher, Miss Burroughs, amazing, yeah? And you see how you're saying, if they try to understand you, mm -hmm. that's all that needs to happen. Oh, Everything will work out. She tried to get what was going on with me, and she said, you know what? Forget about his parents. This guy needs help. She brought in someone special to help me for my last year, year 10 to year 11, wow, yeah, to help me with my ADHD. God Obviously, woman, she still couldn't get papers signed to get me medication or anything yeah, because yeah. my parents need to sign it. But she was getting people in to so get me passed. Pay attention to your education. And Do you know what I'm saying? Stuff. She got me in the gym. Instead of going to lunchtime, because I was getting into loads of fights, mm. stupid fights. I wasn't, I wasn't, I just had anger issues. Like, mm. I was yeah, playing yeah, football yeah. and I'll just get angry for no reason. Yeah, okay? Yeah, that's it. Boom. So, instead of me going out for lunch, she got me in the gym. We used to have a gym in the school and do boxing with oh, her husband, Mr. Somebody. Burroughs. Yeah. Oh, so, I was somebody. boxing. Yeah, yeah. So, I loved it. Every wow. lunchtime, I was making sure I was focused in class so I can actually get to lunchtime. Wow. That last year of school, was like the best year because I was on it because she got me support. But this but is what happens when you have help. This is what I'm saying. So, cool, I get to college now. And in college, you can kind of just, your parents don't need to really sign anything. Mm. Yeah. That's when I started taking medication. Yeah, because at that point, mm. at that that point you can kind of make your yeah. own decisions. Mm. And that's when it hit me that if my parents had kind of collaborated with her, then it would have been more support. Mm. A lot of the kids we work with, 
Being a teacher is an impossible job, by the way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're basically, you're trying to teach kids who are coming home, who are coming to school with a burden. They're coming, you don't know what it's happened, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and they're bringing all of that to you. And you're trying to do that in six hours. Bro. You're trying to make sure they can do it in six hours. No, I'm, I'm... All right. So I just want to play that up to that point right there. A lot, a lot to unpack. I thought it was really, really super profound what he talked about. And the first thing that came to my mind was, was me. Not to sound selfish or, or you know, narcissistic. Self-centered, yeah. Self-centered, uh, but he was he was describing exactly what I had gone through as a kid myself. Even the same background, right? Where second grade, and I knew I knew I was a lot. I was just so aware of who I was in relation to a classroom, right? You would have. 20 some odd kids sitting there doing their work while I'm just walking around with my hands in my pocket, you know, touching the, touching the walls, touching the different posters. I'm like, I didn't know her birthday was in September. Oh, okay, cool. You know, just walking around, you know, all the stuff in the class. And I could just see my teachers like. Is, is that signs of ADHD? I didn't, I didn't realize that. Oh, well, for me, it was like, I was a roamer. So like everyone's doing their work and I'm just literally just walking around class. I'm just walking around class. Yeah, I didn't know that was a problem. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you do that too? Shoot. Much worse than that, but okay. Yeah. So that was, that was, yeah, that was definitely part of it. And so, you know, my mom came to the meetings and they said that, you know, he should be on this medication, that medication. And my mom was, my mom said, no, no, he's not, he's not doing that. You know, he's. He's not doing any of that stuff. And, you know, fortunately throughout, throughout the years, I was able to get, I think that's why I stuck to so many teachers. I had a lot of teachers who understood that I had issues like that and they would always, you know, do something to try and help me. For the most part, it was, we got to get this kid to a computer or something that he really likes that's still where he's still learning and, and, and that'll be fine. And so... That, that's, that's what happened for, for me. Same thing in the college. He said when he got to college, he was able to start taking medication because uh, you could take care of yourself. You know, you could start to put, have more independence in that regard. I did it. I still did it. And so I still, it still required a lot, a lot of focus, you know, for me to, to get it, to get it together. I did start for a while using medication as an adult. And I did see like huge, huge benefits um, do, you, do you care to indulge us in the benefits? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, yes. So I was fortunate. I, I, I just felt like as a teacher, there are so many thoughts that were always racing through my head in the classroom. You know, and there's certain things you can see physically, right? Like my desk was always a mess. My desk was always a mess. And I hated that because how can I model organization and being a successful student and they go to my desk and my desk looks like literally like you know back in the day in wwe and the rock would like rock bottom triple h on the top of the announce table <laughs> that's <laughs> what my desk looked like was, it was the like aftermath the aftermath you know what i'm saying and so i was like there's no way i can model these things for my students if if i'm not practicing these things myself because they're gonna look and they're gonna be like hold on this man telling me i need to get my life together this man life ain't together so uh, I was fortunate to go to, I think it was Dunn. Dunn. I think it was called Dunn, the Dunn service, D-O-N-E. And they put me on uh, a basic uh, uh, prescription of Adderall, I think it was. And Adderall, or they also call it amphetamine salts, right? And I was on that and, man, it was, you know, the, the closest thing I can relate it to is the movie with Bradley Cooper, Limitless. It was like Limitless when he took that pill and he was just like... Man. Everything became clear. Everything became clear, right? My, I was just, the, the main thing is focus. I would focus, I would have a task and I would complete the task and I would, mm. you know, and I could complete it to, you know, to fulfillment, right? And then I would be able to take, everything was just organized and focused. So mm. um, I just want you to think of like having all these files on your desktop, on your computer screen, all these random files, right? 
what it did for me is it was able to take all the random files and put them in the folder that they belong. Mm. I was able to put all the files into all the different folders, all the different folders. So instead of a hodgepodge of like 8,000 different files, there was now 50 folders with all of the all files. The, all the info and details you need. Yeah, right. And so that I was so appreciative of, of that, you know. I don't know why I, I don't know why I stopped using it. Um, I, I can't remember. I, I think I was also going through a, some some hard times as well because I had I ended up having like a lot of anxiety, mm. from something. and so I you know I kind of just left that and I started to see a therapist for a while, and I, I took something else for anxiety and that. Mm. That helped. That helped. That helped as well. Because you know, one of the things I don't talk about with it, with anxiety is trouble sleeping. Mm. I was. I had a lot of trouble sleeping. Like, like I, you know, you're just putting your head down and like they say within ten to fifteen minutes you should be able to sleep. It would take me like wow, thirty to an hour. Shoot, I'm in the same boat. Not. It sounds like you well, sound like I, you know when a person has a commercial and it's like you. It's, are they talking about me? Trouble sleeping. <laughs> this is this. This is this. This is this. And you're like, that, that sounds like my life. Well, I always Ring like, I always pills. have to tell. Ring the pills. <laughs> I always have to tell Festus. It's all a matter of perspective because as, as Dr. Crawford likes to say, you over there, you over there investing in assets. I'm over here investing in liabilities. So I, I'm, I'm more of a liabilities mindset with my things. I always like to say, Fess is just an entrepreneur, he's a business owner, he's a husband, he's a father. So I think your reasons, your reasons for staying up are, are more, they're more tangible, right? You can, we can. Well, we can. well and see, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> usually to me, the thing I struggle with is when I'm quote unquote done with all the stuff. Yeah. It's like, now it's me time. Well, me time spills over. And if I didn't, if I didn't have good workouts, then, then it's just like, I'm yeah. watching a show or something like that. And you know, yeah. now everything is an hour and you could still watch like all these other episodes, but, but back to the main point, sorry y'all yeah. for the digression, <laughs> but, <laughs> no worries. but I, I think it's really interesting. And I think part of the point is, is kind of this is that two people can experience the same thing, mm. but have different perspectives on it. And I think, you know, that's kind of what they were alluding to in that podcast was like trouble in school to one is a diagnosable condition mm. to another based off of their culture. It's, you know, you're acting dumb, Yeah, you know, and you deserve to be slapped. Yeah. <laughs> Get it together. So yeah, let's, let's, let's dive into that. Hey, LYS fam. It's Ole. Thanks so much for listening to LYS. I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk to the parents. That's right, mom and dad. Parents, prepare your child for their best educational fit after high school with our comprehensive LYS Parents Guidebook. Our helpful guide includes a range of activities designed to help you better understand your child's unique gifts and abilities. Additionally, we provide valuable insights into the student loan debt crisis and offer practical tips on how to avoid accumulating large amounts of debt. Our ebook also includes a wealth of information on scholarships, grants, and payment exemptions that can help guide your child towards a bright and successful future. With our expert guidance, you can rest assured that your child is well prepared to make informed decisions about their education and career path. Don't let your child's future be in jeopardy. Invest in their future today by downloading the LYS Parents Guidebook. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to the show because you know it's some good topics. So yeah, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, and he mentioned it too, is the fact that many teachers these days can't even get a chance to do the things that his teacher was able to do. He mentioned the story in high school of the teacher who was able to bring in specialists to come in and, and monitor and diagnose and give tips and things to help. Uh, he also mentioned that his teacher's husband would uh, let him box, right, uh, during, during lunch. And so what that did is that now gave him a motivation for incentive, right? So he changed his behavior so he could get uh, 
the incentive so he could get that thing which he really liked. He loved boxing. They were able to work and find boxing that was able to help him calm down in class, help him focus, help, help him become a more successful student. And uh, I want to get Hill and Crawford's uh, input on this, man. I like uh, one of the things I noticed my last couple of years teaching is like, I would have these great ideas for things to do with students. And, and Crawford, there's one thing in particular having to do with boxing that I want you to talk about if you can. I don't, I'm not sure if you remember the one that you, the, the idea that you had and how either um, potential backlash from admin or people who other teachers may see how that how they may see it and they say and they say oh that's not wrong what are you doing you know or or just the the schedule and the stress of being a teacher how that kind of constricts you from being able to do your job to the best of your ability and if I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of hand gestures i need to calm down all right sorry go ahead yeah yeah y'all go ahead take the floor man yeah, that was the first thing I thought about when he was sharing, the guy in the podcast was sharing his story. I thought about last school year, my particular class were <clears throat> very unruly in a sense to where anywhere they went, where my presence was no longer there, they will always get into fights and other trouble. And constantly I'm being called to go handle this situation and Lee enough this it never occurred like while they're with me it's always somewhere else so I'm like okay these kids for some reason have an interest in trying to fight one another they have all this aggression and they're taking it out upon each other so the idea that I shared with Saranke, you know, I was just thinking, I'm like, man, these kids, every, everything is fighting, fighting, fighting. It could be the smallest thing and they want to fight. So I'm like, okay. So if I was to take them during planning, which would be their electives, which is where they're always fighting and getting kicked out of, I'm like, man, what if I just kept them during electives and we actually went over boxing and it would have been, I would have got the, I told them, I would have bought the sock em boppers. I don't know if y'all remember that, but I went to get the sock em, bop sock em boppers, inflate those, and shoot. In our class, we, we go over it. You know, we do some things with it. And then I was also sharing the backlash with Sharaki because my idea was so out of the box to where they, they have that moment in time to where they're getting their energy out. Like, whether they had a stressful day for, <laughs> yeah, those right there, whether they had a stressful day or they're just frustrated from whatever's going on, they have the opportunity with me and my supervision to kind of let off some of that steam in organized manner versus someone look at them and they didn't like them, so now they're ready to fight, right? But I feel like it would have been so much backlash because it's out of the box and my the powers that be could be look at it can look at it as well i'm encouraging it well no you know i'm trying to give them an outlet to where it's in a controlled environment to where that should decrease some of the tension between them in other areas so that was just my idea i didn't do it because I already had so much other trouble going on. So I didn't want to ruffle those feathers, but so yeah, that was my idea. Bill, how did you um, deal with those students? Because I think it's safe to say that, you know, we all have had a student super AD, super ADD, super energetic. How, how have you dealt with them? And and like, what what has constricted you? Like, has it been like the schedule, the stress? You know, what has stopped you from being able to help you, help those kids? Oh, shoot, man. I mean, my first, <laughs> I was one kid I'll never forget, bro. If he didn't take his medicine, like, they would always send him back to class. Like, it was wild, right? I mean, one time, one time, he's not, I just saw my door open and somebody threw the kid back. <laughs> it was like, he was like, I'm like, what's the word? He, just, he came in and then I was like, oh, okay, he back. So when he went to take his medicine, Sometime, man, I wouldn't get mad. I'd be like, all right, man, look, look. Go around the hall and just run up and down the hall. So I would stand halfway between the door, half, so he would run down the hall. 
He would do what he wants to. Bro, he would get down all four and go, ah, ah, ah. And then he'd get up and go run again. And I asked him, I asked him, hey, man, you ready to come back? He's like, yeah, I'm ready. He'll come back, do his work. Then he'll go run, do something. Then I had another one, man. This man literally built a fort under his desk and was stabbing a, a, a folder. He's like, mm, mm. And he was peeking out like this. I said, all right, bro, come on. <laughs> so, but I guess the thing is, man, like, one of the things, some of these parents, like you said, even if they try to help, they don't help sometimes because they know they're supposed to give them the medicine, but they don't give them the medicine. Like, or, or they'll stop giving the medicine over the summer and then try to start giving it back when it comes to school days. But they'll wait for a month for school to kick in and then, then it will happen. But stuff like me, man, I just like back in the day, I used to just handle it, man. But now stuff, man, you can't do stuff like that. I would have to keep him in the classroom. I can't let him run up and down the hall to get out. I would have to find another way, probably do a little hug circle or whatever that dumb thing is. Whatever it's called. I don't know what's called. I ain't gonna do that anyway. But yeah, man, that was about it, man. That was stuff I had to deal with. Like just parents not want to give the kids the medicine, man. Like it's the craziest thing. Like even now I had a kid who well, you know what? Never mind. I'll just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you talked about the parents because that was actually one of the things that the next thing I wanted to bring up, which was, it's so funny how things become a 180 now. I always say God is funny. He is the greatest comedian because he will um, take these things that were like a theme in your life and he'll just like give it to you in so many ways as you become an adult. And I can't tell you how many times I would see myself in my students and I'm talking about, and y'all know I'm so fortunate. We're so fortunate that we all can say something. We all know pretty much exactly what we're talking about, where it's like, you've got a kid who is just wilding, wilding in your classroom. And you're just like, where, how, what? And then you, and then, you know, for me, a lot of times I would stop and I would say, I feel like, you know, it's just God talking to me, just being like, yeah, you remember that teacher in third grade? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 how she used to look. Remember that teacher in fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh? <laughs> that's how that's how that's exactly how to just be like, oh man. And so I think the the unique thing, the unique, unique thing about that is as mad as I would get sometimes, um, I would try my best to not let it out on them. I would try my best to not uh, make them feel inadequate because it was an understanding that it was almost like they can't really control it. They can't really, you know, they can't really control what happens. They, they don't see that perspective. They're just kids. They're literally just reacting to stimuli and they're reacting to their environment, right? Um, but what I wanted to uh, discuss briefly was uh, I had a student my second year of teaching. So my second year of teaching, the second semester going into the uh, end of the school year is when they left for COVID. It's when COVID hit that spring break, and then we did we never showed back up in person. And uh, I, we had a um, I was trying to think the think of the name of this. Uh, if y'all could help me out, the name of those meetings that we would have ARDS. Sorry, it just came to me. We would have the ARDS, and uh, there was a there was a student who was a lot like me just super hyper, wouldn't raise the hand to start talking, yelling random things out. And they kept mentioning to the mom, hey, mom, there is an opportunity for, for him to be on medication and, you know, this, that, and the third. And she, and she just, she just shut it down. She was just like, nope, no thanks. And so now I've, bless you, I've seen it from all different, all different perspectives now. I was, the, I was that student. I saw how my mom dealt with my mom and my dad dealt with it. And now I'm seeing it 180 as a teacher, right? But here's the funny thing. I got mad. <laughs> I got mad when she was like, no. I was like, man, if you don't get this kid sedated so I can teach the rest of my kids. Because in my mind, I'm like, see, as a teacher, I'm like, okay, if this kid is doing that, it's now affecting the class. And that's where I would get like, Yo, like this is this is a lot, and the stress is so high, and and the and the you know the the job is so much that you can't do what we saw in that video where 
you know, you create something that's really profound to help him. You can create little things here and there to help him, and that'll help for 10 to 15 minutes here and there. But you can't really do anything to create like lasting change in a lot of our students. And so I don't want to talk about culture, right? Because, you know, my parents were from Nigeria and that was their reasoning for, well, I won't say that was their reasoning, but I will say because of their background, right? I think certain things were maybe frowned upon, certain things were looked at in a certain light. But what I do want to do is I want to highlight the, similarities between like a first generation parent right or or you know a parent an immigrant parent someone who's just coming in and an impoverished parent right so a parent who is living at or below the poverty line and so the equation that i wrote down when i was coming up with this is to a certain extent not all the way right but for the for for a lot of the same reasons immigrant parent equals impoverished parent equals ignorance. I think at the end of the day, there's a certain level of ignorance that, you know, these parents have that kind of, that kind of stops them from saying yes to a, to a certain thing or saying yes to this new program or things like that. Um, I want to get you guys' opinion. I know, I know, um, I kind of talked a lot there. I apologize, but I just want to get you guys' opinion on, on that, what you've seen with with that background of student no right? I, I i think you're good there let me if i could just hop in on like just the concept in general right so especially you're teaching here in the united states you're teaching in a diverse city we have to keep in mind that in the united states we are roughly four to five percent of the world's total population but yet we as a country have around, I think it's 50 to 60% of the entire world's wealth, right? And so this is something that I think is a concept that a lot of people don't really realize is, you know, when we talk about immigration, we talk about what's happening at the border and all those different types of things. Even when you're, when you're poor in America, you live better than some current actual kings do elsewhere in the world there are people who are kings and chiefs and literally run whole entire villages and when you're poor in america you have a better standard of living than they do in some cases and what do i mean by that you have access to health care right even when a person's like oh there's no access to health care they cannot turn you away from an er because it goes against the Hippocratic oath. So if you if you go into an ER, I'm not talking about in, in one of these little emergency centers. That's different. I'm talking about a actual hospital emergency room. I'm not talking about urgent care center. They could turn you away from an urgent care center, but from an ER, they cannot turn you away. Anybody who who, who gets federal funding cannot turn you away. So you still have access to some degree of healthcare, right? If you go, if you live in some of these countries where people are coming over, if you break your arm, that's it. You broke your arm. I once had a conversation with a doctor. He would go and do medical missions. And he was talking about when he went to go do this medical mission, you know, they finally heard that he was back because they kept missing him coming back. Well, when they brought this guy, he had broken his leg five years prior. And it took him five years to get his leg reset. I'm talking bone pointing out the leg. I'm not talking, oh, like a little hairline fracture. I'm talking, I'm talking pictures, bone pointing out my leg and them having to surgically put it back in place after five years. And so when you're, when you're talking about these levels, these levels of poverty, right? Oftentimes it does come, come with ignorance due to access. And this is, this is the thing that I think we struggle with. And when I say we, I mean, those who are descendants of first generation and those who are, who have the capability to change their family tree's trajectory, right? Because I, I do think those are two totally different people, right? The person who comes in and it's like, yo, you're first generation American. Your parents don't, didn't have access to the information about medications and about healthcare and about all these things. So when your teacher does, it's a foreign concept to them. 
Like they haven't even been introduced to the concepts. Hey, LYS fam, it's Ole once again. You know, these days, many families are busy, but want personalized attention. We at Laddering Your Success understand this dilemma and have created a unique approach to help guide you and your child with personal development tools to build a life of purpose. This intimate approach is helpful for those parents that feel the need to have a focused heart-to-heart -heart conversation deciding on the next steps after high school. We provide individual post-secondary planning, virtual customized college and career counseling, and scholarship guidance and planning. Our one-on-one -on -one sessions are tailored to each individual student to maximize their potential in the post-secondary realm. With our guidance, your child will be able to make their dreams a reality. Don't wait. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to business on this podcast. So I would say this to the educators, and I know I'm, I'm going to have Daniel and Crawford chime in, is like approach the situation with grace, the fact that they might not even understand what medication does what. You know what I mean? So when, you, when you're coming and you're talking about, you know, ADHD or uh, these different types of things as disease processes, they might be thinking this is witchcraft. Like somebody has bewitched my child. You see what I'm saying? So, so these are some, some, some things to consider. Now, let's go to another one. Let's talk about health and eating because I think that's a component. And so when you got kids who are on the impoverished side who don't eat nutritious meals, what ends up happening is, and I was just watching this powerful YouTube, I'm going to have to send it out, about how your gut actually regulates your brain. And when you eat a bunch of sugar, so carb, carbohydrates or sugar, they actually basically burn out your child's brain. And this is why when, you're, when your kid's an infant, they say, don't give your child sugar. Because when you give the infant sugar, it actually burns out their brain. So by the time they get school age, their brain is burnt out. Their, their neurons aren't firing that well, right? And so now you have, have a whole other thing on your hand. And I'll say one last thing about people from the impoverished standpoint is being broke is not a choice sometimes being ignorant is and a lot of times people bring about their own poverty based off their ignorance who they choose to spend their time with what they choose to watch what they choose to read what they choose to not read who they choose to cuss out and tell off and unfortunately this is the sad reality this is a sad reality when you when you're growing up in that environment and you think you could pop off to everybody you think you could talk noise to everybody. A lot of times the teacher is the only person with a degree who's actually had some kind of formalized education and training beyond high school that some of these people ever meet. And so now you're cussing them out, which, which not only shows a disrespect for the, the individual, but also for the role that person plays. And, there's a, there, and, and I'm gonna throw a spiritual principle out here that I'm done. There's a law of honor that if you do not honor something, right? If you do not honor something, you cannot reap the benefits. So basically you reap what you sow. So you can sow honor, right? You can sow respect. And so the thing is when you disrespect the, the position of a teacher, it doesn't matter who the individual is. The fact that you disrespect the position means that you cannot reap education because you've, you violated the law of honor. You see what I'm saying? So it's one thing if you still come in and honor the, 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 the position or the role, you say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. such and such, I disagree with you respectfully on this for these reasons, ba 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 ba. look, whatever, and have that difference. But when you come in, you dumb, you don't know my kid, ba 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 ba, and you talking all crazy, right? And your child sees that, they see, I don't have to honor education. And what happens when they're 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old? Guess what? They naturally push away those who are educated because you violated that principle. Hey, LYS fam, it's Ole. Just wanted to take a quick break to let you know that even though the cost of college can be daunting, the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook can assist you in realizing your dreams. You can identify and apply for scholarships using the information, advice, and resources in our comprehensive guide. Also, we've provided a template for a successful scholarship essay to help you stand out from the crowd. Don't allow student loan debt to control you. Get your copy of the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook right away to take charge of your destiny. 
Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to that fire conversation. So I'm gonna throw that out there. Just, you know, we gotta, we gotta enrich the folk, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause on that. So I'll turn it over to you fellas. Man, man, man. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that was good, Fess. I like what you say, how the first generation, second generation, and you can see the change in the people too, bro. <laughs> some like some people don't know, they're like, I don't know about that. Because even, even their attitude is about something and what they choose to learn, because sometimes they scared to sign up for something thinking that they're going to get in trouble or they might find out something. But I'd be like, I'd be like hey, bro, sign up for this because it's free food. Or like, or like they won't put that they speak English as a second language. They'll put it as the first language, scared to get the. And what happens is, man, I got a kid right now. Man, I'd man, I be talking to him and, and I kid you not, all, like every time is this. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah you got it? Yeah. And then he'll just stand there and look at me for 10 minutes. I'll be like, bro, you understand what I'm saying? But you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And I looked at him, he was like, and he, he just stood there. I was like, oh, so y'all not trying to get the, y'all can get the help you need because you too worried about what happened because you probably heard something that ha actually happened to somebody else, which makes sense. He'd be like, oh, but bro, I can't get you in this program because your parents writing this stuff on the thing. <laughs> so I can't get you help you need. And then, like, I've been telling my kids, too, about, like, Fess said about the popping off. Like, now, bro, I, I literally stopped class one day. I was like, look here, man. Y'all can't go off on every, everybody. It was like, and, like, I would always tell them, like, man, y'all y'all going to make, like, $150,000 a year when they some of y'all making money. Will y'all lose all that for that one person you don't like? And all I'm looking at me. And then I always use one girl because uh, she always told me what she want to do. She want to do hair, whatever, right? And I would tell, and like, I would just use her. I'd be like, I'd be like man, y'all, y'all want this and that. But if y'all pop off in her shop, she gonna kick you out and never come back. And what's going to happen now is, what happened now is, instead of you paying only $80, now you got to drive over to the other place and charge a double, and now you just lost out. And it's so funny because uh, she's like, yep, sure will. Because last time I had to get, she had to kick out somebody, she said, out the house. <laughs> out the house of mom house. And I was like, yeah, man. So I like what Fitz said, because some of these people don't know what they can get because they might be too scared, but some are just ignorant because some people, like, you was there last year when we was giving out the free food. Was that free food with the Miss Joseph? That was Miss Joseph. And nobody was coming because they didn't want to look a certain way. And I'm like, bro. So what I did, I was like, well, since y'all ain't getting it. <laughs> And the teachers all came out and got up. Like, no, that, that I was going to say, that was the funniest part is like, Mr. Chirunky, where's your car? I have, I have your stuff. I was like, yeah, it's right over there. And I just took it and I go, I, my parents live, my parents live like five minutes away from the school. I was like, mom, I got you. My mom was like, oh, that's a good stuff. Bro, your parents, like, yes, <laughs> your parents, my friends, my neighbors, I got everybody free food. I'm not ashamed of this. I mean, my yeah. mom was telling me one time when they was doing back into the home, she, she said, some people didn't want to come, but then there were people driving Benzes pulling up and getting the free food. They was like, oh. it's free. I'm coming to get it. It just it just makes sense. But I don't know, man. I'm like, you don't Fess. want to get Fessus going. When, yeah. <laughs> once you hear about what someone defends, you say, you see, now that, <laughs> that's a whole other episode. <laughs> but I want to give some space for the good doctor, man. I think, <clears throat> I think there's so many different factors at play when we have this discussion. Because, you know, I, I heard everything and being in those meetings and, and listening to the different effects of medication and things of that nature, I feel like that is up to the family. But I feel that within the example in the, the guy was given in the podcast, the only problem with that was, I don't think nothing is wrong if the family does not want to medicate the child. but they went about it ignorantly in the sense of, okay, if we're not going to medicate the child, we need to find other ways that we can help him in this type of setting. And that was lacking, that was lacking in his particular situation. So I can definitely understand because of certain side effects, if a family chose not to medicate their child, because mm -hmm. sometimes 
the students or the child feels like a zombie, it's a lack of actual feeling and things of that nature. But so if that is the case that where a family like, hey, I want to decline medicating a child, there's other options that they can do and, and other factors that we can consider. Festus mentioned the sugar. So that's actually one of the things that they can monitor, which is the child's, you know, sugar intake, which is kind of difficult because like we talked about us being low income or impoverished, mostly everything we 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 consume is full of sugar. So it's it's definitely other avenues, but I think that as long as the teacher and the parents are working together to um, align with what is it that we both can do to, to help this child? What is it that you can do on your end? If you don't want to give the child medicine, let's, let's limit his screen time um, because that's other factors as well. Teachers are having to try to instruct these students to where at home they're in front of the screen, whether it's on an iPad, TV, whatever, for long periods of time. And unfortunately, you know, whatever activities we do in the classroom might not capture their attention like that. And so they become anti. But on the other hand, on the teacher's side, we have to continuously updating our instructional strategies, right? So with so many factors that, that, that we can do, we can't just put it off on a family and then medicate sure. a child or getting upset if they choose not to medicate the style. We also have to uh, practice reflecting on our instructional strategies. So if I'm a teacher and I'm up talking for 30, 45 minutes and I'm dealing with children, the human brain can only focus for a maximum of 10 to 15 minutes before we go somewhere else and then come back. Same thing with kids. So we, we got to just keep these things in mind so that we can best help their child. Like, the guy in the podcast. I'm pretty sure even though he was struggling, he had things that he could improve on on himself. I'm pretty sure his teacher's just standing talking, 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 talking. I mean, a student that's a busybody like him would definitely get in trouble because the way the lesson was structured, it won't reach him. Even today, as a college a professor, I have to be aware of that. I can't sit there and lecture for hours straight and expect my students to have maximum engagement. That's, that's, so imagine if I have a student that might have tension deficit and things of that nature, you know, I have to switch it up. I have to get a ball. I toss the ball. Now the kids are like, boom, boom, or the young adults are like, okay, you know, give them something to do while we're collaborating and talking, things of that nature. So I just feel like it's so many um, different factors within that, but as long as whether we, the family choose to medicate or not medicate, as long as we're trying to do things to actually help that child. If we're not medicating, let's watch the diet or other things of that nature. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man, I think you said you said it uh, best in terms of knowing the options that are out there. And I think that's I think that's one of the biggest things is that for a lot of and this is this is, you know, I'll kind of go back on the ADHD thing because I did a little bit of research on this in my undergrad was oftentimes uh, no, number one, boys are usually given ADHD medication at a higher rate than than young girls. But on top of that, it seems that black boys are given ADHD medication at a, at a higher rate. But this was the interesting thing that I found out in that research. It's not that they're given medication at a higher rate. It's that they're given the medication at a later date at a higher rate. So what happens is they get to fourth and fifth grades before they start getting medicated, whereas, you know, Caucasian counterparts and other groups are doing it in first and second grade. So what ends up happening is they start to regulate the medication differently versus the young black boys. And then by the time they're in the fourth and fifth grade, they're actually getting into trouble, i.e. fights and different types of things in schools would lead to suspension. So now instead of looking at it just as a, you know, kind of a, a psychobehavioral disease, it's looked at as a behavioral aggressive issue right and so then it leads to suspension and and goes down that 
that pathway. And so I, I want to, Ole, if you could bring up that link, I, I shot you because I think, I think Dr. Crawford pointed out a really good point about even the aggression and, and the boxing and fighting to regulate uh, sugar and to regulate just, just their, their emotions and different kinds of things. So, so you might be able to, some of you guys have maybe seen this link before, or haven't seen this link before. And I'd recommend this to you as educators to look into this link and to look at the work that this organization and this gentleman is doing, because I think it aligns very well with what Dr. Crawford said. And it's the union, the cave of Amdullah Transformation Training Academy. So it's founded by a gentleman by the name of Jason Wilson. And you guys might, might have seen him for those who watch Breakfast Club or different types of things like that. Uh, Ole, maybe you could get to a picture, a picture of him, maybe go to the about page. It's a gentleman who, uh, to, he wanted to transform his community. And so he started basically dealing with young men and, and, and their aggression. And so he uses fight training, martial arts, as a way of building discipline, but also building love. Maybe you guys have, have seen some of his videos on social media where, you know, there's like a kid who's in, who's getting on his dad's back while his dad's doing a push up, and he's, and he's talking to the kid and talking about the weight and the pressure that the kid is putting on the dad's back. And the longer that he's there and the longer that he's behaving in that way, it puts more pressure on the family. These are, are, um, and it's funny because one would say these are non-traditional forms of medication or forms of relief, but in actuality, prior to Western medicine and prior to kind of the way that education is now, these were, it was normative for young men to go out with older men, learn how to hunt, learn how to fish, learn how to do all these different types of things that require high energy, but also require patience, that also require discipline, that also build, build skills into the young men that would make them say, hey, now's not the time to do this. Imagine, imagine this. Imagine you're out hungry in the wilderness and you start laughing and joking, right? And the, the fish you were hunting, the emu you were hunting runs away. What do you think the rest of the guys in the hunting group are going to do to you, okay, when that happens, okay? There, you know, these are different types of things that young men in the inner city just don't know. So when it comes to let me walk around class and let me touch this and touch that and touch this person's hair and touch this and run, run, like that becomes acceptable and normal to them because we're no longer in the real true environment. And so that's where I think, again, Dr. Crawford is like, you know, other educators need to look at this research and figure out how you could bring some of this stuff into the inner city because not every parent is going to want to medicate their child. Not every, and, and this is the other thing that I, I try to stress, and it goes back to the podcast video, is that that child now has to grow up and be in a world without their parents. So what do they do then? What happens when they can't afford the medication? They need to be able to have the other resources, other tools under their belt to say, you know, I can de-stress by jogging. I can de-stress by running. I can de-stress by speed bag, punch, punch, you know, speed punching bag, by push-ups all these different types of things. And in addition to that, I could get my medication. I could change my diet, you know, th those different types of things. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of end there. No, I think, I think we, I think we really <laughs> mashed. We were watching a UK based video. We really mashed that one. We really mashed that one together. We mashed it down. We mashed it down. No, man, that was awesome. Awesome, man. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was that was awesome. I had a couple of things I wanted to drop, but I think we kind of, I think we, like I said, we really mashed that one down. That was that was awesome. That was awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Crawford. Thank you to the ambassador. I don't know if he's still there. He might be. What What about like one minute closing remarks? You want to you want to do that one minute closing remarks? Oh sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so my first year of teaching, I had a student who they put him on medication. And I got really worried because kind of like Crawford said, he basically turned into a zombie. So much so that I was like, bring the other annoying kid back. Bring that other kid back because this, I can't, he was like a droid. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. So I think the key there is collaboration, right? We really, really, really got to have the collaboration. And Crawford, you also brought up a wonderful point about the teacher teaching the parent. I think sometimes our job gets so stressful, we forget that like it is naturally easy for us to teach or it's a skill of ours. 
And it's okay to teach the parent why certain things are happening. And I think one of the biggest issues with schools is when a teacher comes out and says the, uh, says the truth, speaks in truth, a lot of times that can be, you can now be cast as the, the troublesome teacher, right? Because you're being empathetic and loving towards a parent who you guys are both vested in the child's um, future. So uh, I think you're absolutely right there. I wanted to tell a quick story of my fourth grade teacher, Miss Gray, who when my, we came for parent teacher conference, my mom told her, sometimes with Olayinka, you need to just give him a good flick. And this was about 94, 95, maybe. It was close to 10. So yeah, maybe 95. And Ms. Gray was like, ma'am, I cannot. And I remember, I remember because I was so sad. My mom told Ms. Gray, you got to give him a good flick every once in a while. And, and I, I'm going I'm to tell the story because the statute of limitations is up. You, she can't get in trouble. And I was thankful for what she did anyway. I was wilding in her class. <laughs> I was wilding in her class. And I didn't realize she was right behind me. And I was just like, ah. And she just came right behind me and she said, and I looked up, I seen her. When I say I went to my desk and just started <laughs> writing so quick, you know, uh, but I was thankful. And, and, and that's one of the things is another thing with like discipline. Um, in the video that we saw, the man talked about uh, getting whooped at home. And I know a lot of people have a lot of feelings on discipline and physical spanking and things like that. But I do want to say that there is a right way to do it. And I can tell you because I, that's what I grew up with. One of the greatest gifts my dad ever gave me was after every time I got spanked, he would sit me down and we have a man to man conversation, right? And he would tell me, we would we'd break it down. This is what you did. Uh, these were the warnings that you were given. This was the consequence. I'm doing my fatherly duty when I do this. And there's a certain level of maturity that comes really quick. If it's done that way, I still remember same grade. I think I got spanked really, really well. And the next day I turned into a politician. My dad was like, so what did you learn? He's like, dad, I really learned that the, the error of my ways. I've learned that, if, you know, it, there, there are consequences for all your, and the, in a typical Nigerian fashion, my dad's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Just don't let it happen again. I'm sorry. I know I went over a minute, but I just really wanted to get those in. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Crawford. Thank you to the ambassador. Folks, my name is Ole Sharanki. Thank you so much for joining us on this wonderful episode of, of, of Edge of Sets Powered by Ladder Your Success. I didn't forget, someone's got a birthday tomorrow. Happy early birthday to the doctor, Dr. Crawford. Happy early birthday, brother. Wish you all the blessed blessings, man. Love you, brother. Professors, go ahead and end us up, man. All right, listen, 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 listen. There are legitimate excuses for not going to college. There is no legitimate excuse for not getting an education. We are EduSteps powered by Laddering and Success. We will see you on the next episode. Oh, you're still there? Well, thank you so much for listening to the LYS podcast. 